Hello, this is Dave Gimberlein, and today is January 13th, and this is our home training session. So, welcome, and uh, if you're watching it on video, please train along. Uh, feet together, out. Very good. Pick up one foot, go wrong with your ankle and toes. Switch the way. Other foot. Other way. Feet together, wrong with your knees. Other way, feet apart, along with your hips, switch, use your legs, pop your arms around, switch, cross, twist. Pick up your heels. We'll just do a very quick warm up and we'll start on some kata. Take a deep lunging step forward. Switch. Keep it up. Down and forward. Back. Forward. Back. Reach over one shoulder. Switch. Side. Switch, straight one leg, switch, 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 high up, shake out your legs, squeeze your knee up a little bit if you want, get on behind. Okay, on short on to start. I will face away from the camera so we can all follow along. Feet together, bow. And Chodan. Chodan. Boy, to the count. One, two, one, two, three. One, one, two, three. One, Two, one, two, one, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. Boy, I rest. So, quite often. I break the movements into two counts. So we're gonna do that. And generally the first count uh, gets you through to the part where you would initiate your technique. So for instance, in a downward block in hand shodan, we're gonna go one and squeeze together. So this leg, your back leg, your knee is in, your foot position's good, your arms are together. And then two, you initiate your center and shock to get out to your downward block. Then for the stepping punch, you're gonna do three quarters of a step here with your elbows and inner thighs pulling together, your spine straight, pull your drawing arm, and that would be two. So we're gonna do that all the way through the kata, and uh, you'll catch on. So, out, and shodan, and shodan. Looking to your left, one, squeeze together. So your foot is turned in, ready to be your back leg. Pull your drawing arm, shock your center forward. Two, one, three quarters of the way through the movement. Your knees are squeezing in, your elbow is squeezing in on your drawing side especially. Pull this through your center to your back foot and finish your step. Two, uh, Malia, you can push your left hip forward more. One, turn, pivot your left foot, stay down on the ground, squeeze your knees together. Two, shock. Pull your elbow across your center and prepare. One, shock your body. Two, squeeze. Uh, Malia, extend your arm out more. One, 
three quarters of the way through. Two. Chuck. One. Squeeze together and turn. So your right foot is turned towards the target more. And you bend your knee. Two. You're going to go from here three quarters of the way through this far. One. In preparation for your rising block. This hand can be open. Then pull down through your body and rotate your hip. Two. One, step forward, pull your drawing arm a little more, two, one, step forward, two, you're going to turn, look over your shoulder and wait, one, squeeze out, two, chuck, one, squeeze, elbows in, Two, one, to the back. Are we going that way? No, the way out? Uh, we're going that way. No, we're going that way. That way? Two, there you know. Oh wait, no wait, I forgot the block now. Yeah, you're no, you're, you're going the wrong way. That way? One, squeeze. Two, oh, maybe not. All right, so now we're going to go back where you came from. One, squeeze, two. One, elbows in. Uh, Malia, step forward more. More, 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 more. And your arm doesn't coil because you're doing a step and punch. Two, shock. Straight hips. One, squeeze, two. One, squeeze, two, one, turn and look, two, shock, one, elbows and knees in, two, one, two, one, two, Iris, Iris. So, Yu Feng already knows this, but Malia, you need to use your drawing arm more on the first half of the motion, and the inside of your arm relates to your inner thighs. So, if I am here, and I'm going to step forward to do a step and punch, let's say, I don't go like this once, where my butt's out and my arm's loose. I pull this in, 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 and it helps with inner thighs. So, bad, good. Squeeze and rotate. Inner thighs, squeeze and rotate. Your center goes forward, then you drive off your center into the target. Better. One more time through hand, Shodan. Just one count per motion, but you're going to pretend it's two. So I say one, and you go squeeze, shock. Two, squeeze, shock. You're going to take that second to set before you do the technique. Out. Hey, I'm sure. I'm sure. Boy. One, squeeze, shock. Two, squeeze, shock. One, squeeze. Two, squeeze, shock. Three, one, one, two, three, one, squeeze, shock. Two, one, two, one. So Malia, I think that was much better. 
The only thing I would caution you on is when you're moving straight forward, don't let your body go side to side. So from the front, I want to go one, two, and not one, two, where I, I went that way. So super common, because sometimes people are taught they have to go out a hip distance, or I've seen schools teach that they have to step out at 45 degrees. So they move forward this way. And that's foolishness if you want to deliver shock forward. I would say it's not always that simple though. Can you stand here for a second and put your right leg in front? If I am driving straight forward, going up and down doesn't help, right? That up is a waste of my time. Same with going in and out. I'm going this way when I want to hit that way. However, if I'm clever enough that means, to be using my leg to disrupt this stance right as I hit, that is enough to increase my technique success. Or, uh, same flip. You can come this way around, boom, boom. That little bit messes him up, weakens him. And one more way, still with that leg. If my knee is going in and then out, this might be the attack before I finish my punch. It helps to weaken him as part of the stance. Thanks. So sometimes when people are going in and out with their feet, it's historically because of that reason, even if individuals or whole styles have forgotten why. But if your goal is only to deliver a shock forward, going in and out, with your weight does not help you. Your leg path might be a little bit in and out just because your inner thighs are a little quicker for you to move than moving from out here. That's a little awkward and slow, right? So you balance it in the middle of your legs. And when you teach it to beginners, it is often in and out. Your feet do this little swoop. So, Lots of reasons for your feet to go in and out. Not very many reasons for your center to shift from one side to the other side. Unless you're specifically doing one of those applications. Hand knee down. Out. Like that. And knee Boy, one count each move. One, two, three. One, two, <clears throat> Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, one, two, one, two. I missed. All right, we're gonna kind of break the moves into two counts, but not all of them. But what I want to worry about is that your legs are directing and shocking each technique. So for instance, on the very first move, I do not want you to put your hands back here and then go like this. It was once described to me that your center is gonna move a little bit and your hands get left just slightly behind because it helps connect your elbow to your center. So that exists a little bit, and then your hip action is similar to this, but you're going this way. Your hip throws your hands around. So we're gonna try two counts. First count, you can stick your foot out and look to your left. One. 
and then shock your hip, two. Not bad. Next move, squeeze. One. Uh, Malia, that was good, but you can do better. Turn your hip more, 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 more. Turn your hip, yep, but not your knee. And then this upper fist, turn it towards you. Three, hip goes back. One more, three. Wait, you're not helping. Shoulders down, real stance. Pull your drawing arm. Now you're gonna look to your other side. Sorry. <laughs> and drop your hip. One, two. Twist your hip. One. Uh, keep your knee out, otherwise it was great. Two. Not bad at all. Stack and look to your right. One. Uh, Malia, actually touch your hands. They say teacup and saucer. It sits there on your side. Then snap. Yours are far apart. Side snap. Back fist strike. Two. Three. So, you were very flexible. But still, as a habit, don't thrust your hips when you snap. They go up and down a little bit and snap. They don't jab out and come back, even though you're flexible. Yep, that's a little better. Continuing forward, uh, we'll do two counts. Squeeze together this way. One, and then pull down with your drawing arm, two. One, two, and then you're going to start and go this far. One, this hand's going to cover, two, yep, your left elbow has to be inside your body frame, not outside, inside, yep, turn and look, one, and shock your support leg and your drawing arm. Two. Good. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. Uh, Malia, go back two steps. So you have your right arm up. This is what I saw, and the camera angle's weird. What I want you to do is stay straight and pull together here, and then shock, still straight. And what I saw was your weight tilted to the side and then wobbled when you blocked. So that could totally be an optical illusion. So you go, uh, all right, one, Two, one, two, one, two, one. Right there. Right there, I feel like you lose your balance on the coil. One, two, better. Okay, come across inside block. One, two, three. Punch. One, turn your hip a lot. Turn, 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 turn. Malia, turn, turn. Yep, more, more, more. Nope, the other way. It would be that way if it was this arm, but it's this arm, so it's the other way. Two, three. One, I'm gonna block. One, coil and look. Downward block. Two. Uh, now you're going to go this far. You're going to reach and hold. One. Right elbow in. Two, pull down and twist. One, coil and look. Two. 
One, coil and look. Drawing arm back. Your left arm, yep. Two. Twist your hip more, 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 more. Other way. Yep. Hi, right, back. Okay. So the last moves are easiest to talk about, so I want to talk about those. And then we'll go back kind of to the middle. This is kind of a preparation. And the reason I care about your drawing arm again is because your inner arm and your inner thighs are related. So if you go this way, I feel like you're not pulled together like you could be. And then when you pull, you physically want to drive this hip in and up. So the primary application, and everybody has a difficult time not doing this because it's so obvious, you block and then you strike. So he's here, he throws the punt, there's my block, I get in this far, my hip is going to drive his head backwards. I mean, it's a very obvious boom to displace him and shock with my forearm. So you will find people who try to tell you that you're breaking somebody's elbow with your rising block, but try and make this work sometime. It's just a silly idea where this is actually very obvious, very simple. Yeah, so go one, now drive your hip two. That was better. Can you kind of see how that would work? Reach is the block, boom, that's the strike. Does that make sense? Very good, you fun. Okay, so then, uh, and it's the same on both sides. Uh, could be different arms, could be the same arm. It depends on what you're trying to teach. Reach, twist. Better, much better. Okay, here's the middle part. The way I learned this was as directly as possible, this arm has got to come across and block. But if you break this down, can you step and punch it this way? Just stand there, step and punch. If the arm is coming at me here, why would I expose my body, bring the wrong arm across and try, I mean, it, it really doesn't make any sense. At the very least, you block this way and then move and, and do something. You can change the angles so that it becomes a little more likely, but it's still not. It's just not a good idea. So what I do instead is I teach a bigger windup. Instead of in and out, I have an arm that does like a figure eight almost. And the reason is his hand is coming at my head or body, it doesn't really matter. And I'm covering it, but I'm attacking his arm. Whoa, on top here, down. This will buckle his legs, it drops his head forward, and then this comes around and hits. Uh, my grip here is on the nerves on the sides of his arm. One, two, and then you would kick and then you would punch. So, almost one. Two. One. One. So, uh, over here. Uh, if I don't have a left arm, I just pretend it's not there, then when this hand comes, I'm going to knock it out of the sky with my right and come back with my right. Knock it, and then your block is the hit. Punch. Block, hit. One, yes. Yep. Ba, ba. Ba, ba. Now, you do have a left arm. So as long as you have a left arm, that can cover your head and allow this to finish. Yep, yep. And then I end up trapping his arm here. And then I kick them in the inner thigh, groin, whatever's available, and then I punch them. Um, can you see how that would work? So, go back that way. 
Let's do just that part a few times. Uh, back up a little bit and say so you get two or three or four in. I'll do it the wrong handed. So I'm a mirror. So your right hand is going to come up and go across. You're going to go one, two, three, four. Kick, punch. Now you have to wind up a little bit to make this work. Bump, bump. Kick, punch. Yep, one more. Bump, bump. Kick, punch. Good job. So. Malia, you're turning your hip, good. You're twisting your body, good. In both cases, you need to put more weight behind your technique. So, put your hand through there, would you? When I turn this way, when I turn this way, my body's going to hit this and knock it. So it goes flying down. My body weight doesn't. It's not the same as, right? So I hit here, boom, and then I would do the same strike in and down with my body weight again. And as it turns out, this technique shows up in lots of advanced kata as a finisher, and people just don't know it. So Yufeng, in your Basai Dai, you loosen and then you drop. You hit with your body weight. Yeah? So, Malia, if I was there, I could put my hand on you and say, no, push, but I'm not there, so I can't. But think about it. So, um, our next technique, the last one I'm going to talk about, I guess. Can you stand here one more time? Uh, actually, over here. Always a good time. Yep. So, if you do your augmented block, you have your hands down here, and then do that. Right? You know what I'm talking about? Yep. So I do not think that's what this is for. Mostly because I have a really hard time getting him to punch this far away. And if I did, why would I step forward and block it with two hands? That doesn't make any sense. So if I change this to where this punch is coming at my head, I am now my windup, instead of being down here, it's going to cover my head and then come back and across. So one, two. And to add to it, my knee on the one would be striking into the inner thigh before I hit a mirror and here. Yes, that was actually excellent Malia. So if you can just visualize that there's a hand coming at you, you know, one, two, three, every time, it, it changes the way you move. So, good job. One more time. So there, uh, on my YouTube site, there are many videos of me doing parts of Hey On Need On, and also the big long 12 or 15 minute thing that was really a two or three hour seminar that they just cut down about what Hei Nidan is. And so I think, so Hei An Nidan used to be called Pinan Chodan. It was the very first kata that Itosu taught. Historically, Itosu was starting to teach karate to the general public, especially school children. And when they say children, it's like 12 to 15 year olds were kind of his middle school people. And he did not have them for very long. So he thought, I, I don't have time to teach them Kung Fu Dai. They'll never retain it. They'll just, you know, move on. So he created or made up or revised the Pinans as an introductory set of kata. The very first one he taught was this one. And people think that it's not a real kata, that it's just kihon. It's just basic movement for kids. It has no real meaning. There, there's a large part of Shotokan people that think that. And I believe they're wrong. Why would a guy who dedicated his life to karate, who's been training for 50 years, decide I'm just going to teach random crap to people and see how they do? 
I think instead, he said, if these guys are attacked, if they get in a fight, if they actually need to use it in self-defense, this is my most important stuff. So, if somebody throws a punch at you, it tends to pick your arms up. It tends to put your legs on your back, on your back leg. This is a flinch reflex. So he throws this punch. I already went this far, just a little bit of training, and I can get this, where I'm driving into his head and protecting myself at the same time. So if you learned nothing else, this is darn useful to know how to do. So he might have grabbed me and thrown a punch, whoa, and I went like that. I mean, that's an extremely common attack. It was 200 years ago, it is today. It happens all the time. So people, uh, do a step and punch, who rely on kumite, shifting, driving, that's great, but if the attack starts here, my shifting sucks, I can't get away from the guy, and I'm gonna spend all my time doing this, and I won't have an effective technique. And if I had just been taught this, I'd be on my way to the next thing which is two and three. One, two, three. So one more short story and then we'll just keep going. I a lot of the people that come to class that train have trained other places. And to me, one of the worst things is the development of modern sport karate. And it's not that I'm against competition. I competed for many years. I loved it. I loved kumite, I loved kata. It was frustrating, it was scary, but it gave me a reason to keep trying, keep training. But the way Nishiyama taught kumite, everything had a reason behind it. And you had to develop a finishing blow technique that could hurt the guy, put him down. That was your goal. It has changed, it has morphed into people hopping and touching each other. And it's just foolishness. And I was trying to teach this one technique. Grab and hit. One. I was trying to teach him that. One, two, three. And this person, who I had just shown it to over and over again, under pressure, when I started to throw multiple punches, they started... They danced around so much it had no effectiveness. It didn't stop my punch, it didn't have any power. They couldn't do the technique, because from the first day, they'd been taught to hop around, and that's not part of the technique. So one of the worst things I ever saw, actually, was a kid, eight, learning basics, and studying very hard, and going, one, two, it's just totally not what it's for. In a, in a kumite situation, you don't have time for this. The bouncing takes away from the effectiveness. It's just the worst of both worlds, trying to teach them basic techniques with bouncing. And so some people that think that, and the other get thing I think is the, the snapback punch. I'm like, then why don't they do kata? I mean, they don't, right? It's, it's planted, it drives. I, all that had a purpose to it. Thank you. So that was me talking way too much. Handy up. Out. What? One, drop, shock. Two, three. One. Two, three. One, two, three. One, squeeze, shock. Two, three. One, squeeze, shock. Two. One, two. One, block, hit. There you go. Two, three, kick, punch. You're gonna smash the arm again. One, smash, hit. Two, kick, punch. Now the windup is going to block your face. One, block, strike. There you go. Throw him on the ground. Two. Here's another one. One, block, strike. Throw him on the ground. Two, block, 
strike. Yep. I rest. So Malia, that was awesome. I could see you thinking as you went through it. So I think all kata should be that way. It should make sense to you as you go through it. And I, I believe that Funakoshi learned that way. So he talks about... So I think the first thing you would do is learn the applications, and then later you'd be working on your form and your stance and your position, working out all the little kinks. But you already knew what it was for. So, yep, see, now that it's in your head, you can't stop doing it. <laughs> so, anyway, I think when you just copy the outsides of kata, which is, you know, 90% of the world does, 95%, you miss a lot of the important stuff. Um, so anyway, let's try hands on that. Out. And that. And so that. Boy. One. Two, three. One. Two, three. One. Two. Three. Four. One. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, in and out and turn. Two. I am it. All right, let's see how it goes. I will count and I will watch. Out. Hands on that. Hands on that. All right. What? Malia, more hips sideways and pull your drawing arm a lot more. Nope, the other sideways. Uh, yep. Now, your hand is way down here. Put it up here. And pull it. Two, three. Two, three. Very nice. One. Drawing arm again. And now your hip is crooked. This way. Yep. Uh, so make a crease here in your hip, but don't uh, bend this part. Two, three. One, two, three, four, one, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, step and punch, one, in and out with your footwork, and turn, two, hi, me. Iris, okay, you Fong, you first, um, on this move, your hand is kind of hanging out here in the middle of nowhere, and it's supposed to fold like by your kidney. And part of the idea, can you stand here, uh, is that somebody grab with one or both hands, it doesn't really matter, one's good for now, and it stays here in space as I move. So I can't be stronger, I can't pull it away, so it stays and I start to pivot around and actually it'll come loose as I swing. That's one thing you can be doing with it. Um, that was much, much better. If uh, I was doing something like that, so here's the problem. Uh, step and punch, would you? Thanks. This is a bad idea because if he turns his back on me, I would grab him or hit him. I mean, it's just, it's not a good idea. But, uh, grab with one or both hands. 
if he's, if I am going to do something like that, I'm going to take my elbow and stab him in the chest with it. So it's going to be a much more aggressive, whoa, and then I'll spin and go. And it'll look about like that. And it's kind of a theme in the kata because you're doing the same kind of thing with these. Right? So turn it over, boom, and hit him with it. Um, there are many other things that can be uh, grabbing, twisting, uh, arm manipulations, but it's a good basic idea. Malia, when you stand up, uh, stand up, uh, sideways, try to make sure that your elbow is slightly in front of your shoulder. Uh, put it back here once. If it's back here just a little bit, it'd be strong. It doesn't stay, it's, it's a weak connection. If it hangs on the front, it is much stronger. It's a base to hit from, up and down, front and back. So you kind of put your knuckles on the top of your hip joint where your belt is and leave it on the front half of your body, not the back half. There are, again, exceptions if you think you're doing something else, but uh, there are a lot of cool applications for this. All of them, most of them, though, require a nice, strong structure. So if I am going to stand up like this, and I'm going to bring him with me, I'm going to come across here, step behind, and lift, I have to have a strength here and be sure of what I'm doing. If I'm off balance and weak, it doesn't work. That's a little better. Uh, this next part, come over here for a second. This next part you tried, um, this was fine. This, try to imagine your elbow comes across your center to your inner thigh to your foot, and then from your foot to your inner thigh to your center and back out. So you're using your legs. You absolutely tried to use your legs. Down, yeah. It's just that you can do a little more. Yep, boom, boom. That, that's coming along fine. So that's the right idea. Can you put your right foot in front and do that? One. Uh, right leg. One, two, stick. This part, if I pull on it, comes across the center, across the inner thigh, down into the floor. Down, down. There you go. And I let go. Lock two, comes flying back up. So you're developing a spring on the inside that is very useful. Better. Just keep it in your mind. That's not bad. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, there are Lots of reasons why you would do this. Uh, and I uh, kind of watch the videos, I guess, if you want to get the idea. But the idea of your uh, foot going in and out and then you pivot, I really like that as a throw. Maybe stepping in front, uh, kind of towards the camera, I think. Yep. So, all right, so uh, maybe this blocks, and then you go like this, and that is a setup where I push his hip or body out of the way. Now when I do this, in and out, and turn, I'm going to disrupt his stance, in and out, and then bring him with me when I turn. So, and then you come back and hit him one more time. But the body dynamic works exactly like that with the steps, with the stance. So it's just a thing. There's a few others that are also awesome to do, but I like that for a basic one. It feels very useful. <sighs> Hands on down. Out. Got that. Hands on down. All right. One. Drawing arm, pull, pull, pull. Two, three. One. Two, three. One. Two. I'm a mirror. Three. Four. One. One, two. One, two, one, two, 
out against your legs, down and out. You're not strong. One, two, one, two, one, two. Keep your head up, Yufang. One, two, Three, four. One, turn. Two. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. One, two. One, two. One, two Three, four, five. Sink down your legs. Yep. Iris. So you fun just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. You tend to hit and then bop just a little. But you know, it used to be worse. Mm -hmm. uh, Malia. You step into your stances, especially a back stance, but maybe also your kibidach, and you're standing there, but you're not creating strength. So I, it looks weak. It looks like, oh, she's just going to tip over if I go push on her. And again, maybe someday I'll come push you over. That's better. So just think down and out kind of with your legs. Yep, it's better. All right, moving on. Hey, I'm going on. If I do it this way and I'm a mirror, I can watch you a little bit. So, oh, let's see. Hey, I'm going on. One, two. Three. One, two. Three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, two. One, 
three, four, one step, two, three, one, two, three. Five minutes. First. I noticed this, and different people do it different. From here, you should be in a relatively deep stance. And then you pull, and your body comes back a little bit, and then your hip pushes back out for the power. So this is down, back, in. Yep, pretty good. Two. Uh, you have to compress into your support leg. So not just your arm, your body squeezes down. Better. And then your leg shocks. One, two. Good job. All right, and then here I noticed. If you go one, two, and you're gonna do three, Malia, you are turning too much that way. It is more in, 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 just enough to get your body weight to hit. Better, uh, you can turn a little bit more. So, you know this. I see two things. People either turn too much this way, uh, like this, so it doesn't go the way I want to go, it goes that way. Or they oddly turn their hip the other way and they do this kind of arch backy thing, just as bad. <laughs> you want to figure out how your body weight is going to hit the target. So it's not turned all the way this way and it's not turned all the way sideways or less. It turns just a little bit, a little bit, your body weight to hit. So, uh, a guy who teaches in Canada. Jerry Mark? No. Oh, Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, Japanese guy. Oh, Sugiyama? Nope. No. Uh, not Sugiyama. Um, uh, anyway. That's what it uh, Does it? Uh, Katsumata. Katsumata, that's it. Yeah. Katsumata was teaching a big group of people, <laughs> and he had the same problem. And he said, how did your hip go? And people were like, oh, straight, sideways, 45. And he said, well, not really. He said, more, more just natural, where if this leg is going to be strong and this leg is pulling into it, there's only a place you can be and have it be strong. If I change from that, it's not strong anymore. It, it's uh, misdirected. That's much, much better, Malia. So some of these become more obvious in lots of places as you discover them. So another thing that I used to teach and sometimes I still do, is you're here in Kibirach and you're gonna switch that way. So your body drives straight that way, straight that way, then your leg comes with. And it's not much different. Your weight has to sit in your front right leg. Pretty good. Feel it wobble just a little bit. Oh, that was better. Good job. I didn't see anything else. Must be perfect. Uh, let's move on. Take a shot on. This one for sure I can do mirror image. And you can go that way. So, I'm out. Take a shot on. Take a shot on. Boy, as you know, I put this back in. Uh, which way are you going? One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. One, two, three, four. One, two. One. One, two. One, two. One, two. I make. I rest. 
So Malia overall, pretty good. Uh, the one thing I would say is really, really open to interpretation. I mean, this whole kata is with the little things. But this, I think, will help get your body behind the technique. And that is on almost everything that you do, aim for the middle of you. So sometimes you go one, two, three, and it's over there. And it could be much more in the middle of you and more stable. Yep. And then you go one, two, the middle of you, not over there on the side. Well, even more middle. Um, so maybe that's the two big things. Yep, those are fine. Those are supposed to go sideways, but your center still hits sideways. That was good. So all in all, those are not big things. It's just a habit of trying to hit with your center. So it is perfectly possible that there are applications where you'd end up where you do want your arm over here and not in the middle, but still your body would direct it. And right now, occasionally, your arm is just hanging there without your body telling it where to go. So pretty good. Any specific question about Techie? I can tell you at the beginning, here's this. Um, when you do the first crossover, you want your body to be stable. You don't want to break with your butt out or your head out. Too big. Just, just cross. Just that little bit. And then you're going to drop your foot when the other one comes up. That's good. Yep. And now there's uh, at least two choices, maybe three or five. Your arms can either stay here, one, two, perfectly acceptable. But your torso has to be strong then. So maybe when you cross over, you're, you could be more together. One. Oh, that was pretty good. Now, you could also, instead of going one, two, you can wind up. You can go one, two, but your body still has to maintain its structural integrity. You still have to be strong. One, two, pretty good. So I want to say pick one or the other. So either leave it here and go from here to there or wind up, but you can't leave it here and then try to wind up and go. It, it's not a good mix. You did that. You did the wind up in the middle. So either leave it down and go out. Good, good, good. All up. See it? Out. All right. So do you see what I'm saying? Do one or the other for right now. Either leave it until now or coil and then go. Don't mix them right now. That's fine. What it used to be, so there's often an argument in karate uh, that things used to be this way because there's a picture of somebody, a Tosu or, not a Tosu, but a Funakoshi or a, a Mabuni or uh, Otsuka from Wataru. He did it this way, this way. I have looked at tons of pictures and they do it different at different times. So I think they adapt it to what they think the application is. So besides this option where it stays down and this option where it coils, there was also one, the one, two, three. And that's close enough that it can also just be part of this wind up one. But very useful, very common was that squeeze into your chest. Yep. So sometimes, uh, I don't worry too much about a picture where somebody did it one way, because sometimes you can find three pictures where they did it three different ways. Um, and that's a problem for all styles. They think the way their instructor taught it is the only way it can be done, and he always did it this way, and then it turns out he did it differently at different times. So, and there's even a picture, and this comes up a lot. There's a picture of Funakoshi where he's doing the side snap back fist strike. And he says to hit with the edge of your foot. And there's a drawing 
of them with his foot up in the air like a front kick. And so people say, oh, it was always a front kick. Well, no. It was whatever it needed to be at that time. Sometimes it was a front kick, sometimes it was a side kick. So uh, I'm big on, it's very odd. Precision matters, but also it's also open to interpretation. So if you decide to change it, though, I want you to know about doing it a specific way for a specific reason and not being sloppy. So where you kind of do both. Uh, I personally, I do this three different ways on purpose. I go one, two, I go one, two, and I definitely go one, two, depending on what I'm practicing at that time. And other parts of my kata change too, depending on what I think it's for. So, anyway, I believe we're done with kata for today. Any questions or problems? No? Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, Jean Noel, you can you can turn your picture on. I'm happy to see you. Um, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much.